Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at using the fundamental theorem of line integrals and we want to evaluate a line integral using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So the first part of this problem says find a function f such that the field f, capital F, is equal to the gradient of little f. So the field here is 3 plus 2xy squared i plus 2x squared yj and we want to find a function such that the gradient of that function, little f, is equal to the field, capital F. And then part b, we want to use that to evaluate the line integral along the curve c, which is the arc of the parabola, y equals 1 over x, from 1, 1 to 4, 1 over 4. So to do this, first of all, we have to know what is the gradient. So part a, we have to recall what is the gradient. So it says the, the gradient of f, should be equal to this field. Well, what is the gradient, first of all? The gradient is the vector field, fx, comma, fy. So that's the gradient. And then that's supposed to be equal to this component, 3 plus 2xy squared, comma, 2x squared y. And that is our field. So the gradient is supposed to be equal to the field. Now this tells us that the partial of the function little f with respect to x should be this component 3 plus 2xy squared. So f sub x should be equal to 3 plus 2xy squared. And f sub y should be equal to 2x squared y. So if I integrate those with respect to their corresponding variables, I should get f of xy. So f of xy will be equal to, in the first case, the integral of 3 plus 2xy squared dx, which we could say is just integrating with respect to x. So it's 3x plus x squared y, or sorry, x squared y squared, plus maybe something that only depends on y, so we'll call that g of y, so maybe something that only depends on y plus a constant, we'll stick that in there explicitly like that. The second one, f sub y equals 2x squared y, if I integrate that with respect to y, I get f of xy, which is the same function, should be equal to the integral of 2x squared y dy, but now I'm integrating with respect to y and I would get x squared y squared plus maybe we'll say some function that only depends on x plus a constant. Now why do I add these functions that maybe only depend on y or only depend on x? Well in the first case if you have a function that's just dependent on y and you differentiate that with respect to x it's going to go away, it's going to be zero. Same thing with this constant, differentiating a constant we get zero so these two terms would just go to zero when I differentiate. So if I differentiate with respect to x I get 3 plus 2xy squared which is exactly what I want in my gradient. Now the same thing in the y com or the second part of the function f of xy equals x squared y squared plus h of x plus a constant. Then I differentiate this with respect to y, this constant goes away and this h of x would go away. If I look and compare these two functions, this matches, but then I have a function of only x right here, so h of x is equal to 3x, and g of y, I don't have anything that depends only on y, so I'll say g of y is just 0, and then I can say that my function f of xy is equal to 3x plus x squared y squared plus maybe a constant c. And that is good enough for part a because we don't necessarily need to know what the constant is. Um, if we were given some point that we could plug in, we could figure out what the constant is, but we don't have that, so we'll just stop right there and say that's our function, 3x plus x squared y squared. And then we want to use that in part b to evaluate the line integral, so let's look at part b. So for part b, the main thing to remember is that the integral 
over the curve C of a gradient, so a conservative vector field, is just the vector field, uh, the potential function evaluated at um, the second point minus the potential function evaluated at the first point. So this is what we call path independence. It doesn't matter what path you take to get between these two points. What matters is the points themselves. So a conservative field, um, that's the key. So we're going to say that the integral over the curve C, f dot dr, is equal to the line integral of the gradient of little f, which we just found, dot dr, because we've said that f equals gradient of little f. Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus for line integrals, we just say that this is going to be f of x2, comma y2, minus f of x1, comma y1. Now, what is x1? What is y1? All this stuff. So this is going to be our starting point, x1, y1. And this is going to be our ending point, x2, y2. Now, it doesn't matter that I travel along the part of the hyperbola. So the hyperbola, you know, looks something like that. It doesn't matter which path I take. I can take the hyperbola. I can take the straight line. I can take some other crazy path to get there. It doesn't matter because it's path independent whenever your field is conservative. So all I care about is this point one one and this point four one quarter. So this is going to turn into f of four comma one quarter minus f of one one. And now I plug those into my function that I just found. And my function was x squared y squared. So that's going to be four squared times one over four squared. 3 times 4, and that's the function evaluated at this first point, plus c, minus the function evaluated at 1, 1. So that's going to be 1 squared times 1 over 1 squared, minus 3 times 1, plus c. And now we have some nice cancellations here. The c cancels, and then we just have some numbers here. We have 16 times 1 over 16, which is 1. Okay, sorry, it should have been a plus there, plus 12. Um, minus, and then parentheses here, we have 4. So we have 1 plus 12 minus 4, that's just 9. And that is the value of our line integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus for line integrals.